Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive with Dr. Rebecca Risk. Do you ever feel that even though nothing seems seriously wrong and you pass all the medical tests, that you still feel that your health, pain, and fatigue are completely out of control? It doesn't have to be that way. Listen to the tips and suggestions given on our program today and take back control of your health. Now, here is Dr. Rebecca Risk. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Today, I'm speaking with Wendy Myers. She is the founder of MyersDetox.com. She is a detox expert and functional diagnostic nutritionist in Los Angeles. She is the number one best-selling author of Limitless Energy, How to Detox uh, Toxic Metals and, and Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I knew I was going to trip over that. <laughs> Detox toxic metals, which is actually quite important. Um, what inspired you to put this book together? Well, you know, I'm very, very passionate about educating people about heavy metals and how they dramatically impact their health. You know, I found myself at 37 years old taking impeccable care of myself and still having health issues. You know, I was like many of the listeners, eating an impeccable diet, cooking my own food, all organic. I was taking amazing supplements. I was exercising a few days a week, going to bed early every night, uh, just doing everything right, or so I thought. And I still had a lot of various symptoms, you know, brain fog, fatigue, didn't have the, the energy I felt like I should. And I was having mood issues and just didn't feel well. And I went to my doctor and did all these tests and found out that I had thyroid issues, adrenal fatigue, the hormone levels of a menopausal woman, and and lots and lots of nutrient deficiencies. And it was uh, really surprising and a wake-up call for me. And uh, the doctor wanted to do hormone replacement therapy. But I thought, you know, I'm 37. That's not really, you know, what I had in mind or, you know, had envisioned. Mm -hmm. So I went on Dr. Google and started realizing, you know, over time that heavy metals were a contributing factor to my health issues. And when I started detoxing and removing mercury and thallium and arsenic and other metals that I had, I felt better and better and better. So I, you know, in the course of learning about all this, I started MyersDetox.com to educate other people about why their symptoms are perhaps being caused by metals and why they're not getting resolution of their symptoms, even though they're living a really healthy lifestyle. Well, you know, I I treat heavy metals a lot. They seem to come up for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, And the most common question, because as you said, you were eating properly and doing all the right things, is where do they come from? They come from the air, food, and water. It's really, really hard to avoid, or impossible, rather, in our environment. Because if you look around your desk or wherever you are, everything has metals in it. So all of these things have been trudged up from the earth in you know, manufacturing and industry. And, and they get into our environment. Uh, they get into the water. They get into the air. You know, Coal burning that we use for fuel unleashes mercury and cadmium and other metals into the air. It gets into our food, all the lead from all the leaded gasoline that was used for decades. That's still in the soils, getting into our vegetables and our animal proteins. And it's just, there's just so many different points of entry, not to mention our personal care products and makeup and shower water. Um, So it's really not a question that do you have metals? You do. It's really just more a question of what metals do you have and how much? Well, I definitely agree with that. I don't think I've ever tested anybody that didn't have an issue with metals. And then people are always surprised. And then I'm surprised that they're surprised. Yeah. Because, you know, because I'm like, well, of course you do. Um, But, you know, of course, the education has to come in for them. Um, You know, even where I live, our air quality is rated a D for air quality. So even though we can see the Rocky Mountains, people think that, oh, we must be near nature so we're okay but we actually have such poor air quality that it's an issue for everybody let alone what's in our food and in our teeth and and that kind of thing 
Yeah, yeah. It's a huge, huge problem. And it's, you know, really my passion to bring awareness to people that, you know, you need to wake up. These are going to be contributors to your health issues, to your symptoms, to your medical diagnoses. And if you don't address these and remove these toxins interfering in every different organ, gland, metabolic function in your body, not to mention your waistline, um, you, 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 unless you address these things, you are going to at some point have a symptom or fatigue or brain fog or a diagnosis. These metals interfere in your immune system. Something is going to break down um, if you don't uh, you know, have awareness about metals and do something to remove them from your body, not to mention chemicals. So, um, you know, your your book is, talks about energy. So let's just talk about how this affects our energy. Yes. Yeah, so there are certain metals that interfere in our body's ability to produce energy. So our mitochondria, our little cells, powerhouses that make our energy currency, and they have certain metals like arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, and cesium, and antimony that essentially poison enzymes that transport nutrients into the mitochondria. So if even if you're taking mitochondrial or energy enhancing supplements or brain enhancing supplements, which are actually mitochondrial supplements typically, or if you're eating an amazing diet, um, if you have these metal poisons in your body, you are going to be at a reduced ability to produce the energy that your body is capable of. Uh, they prevent the nutrients getting in to your mitochondria to make the energy. So it's really, really essential to remove these metals from your body if you're experiencing fatigue or especially chronic fatigue because we need energy not only to power our bodies and our brains, our brains use 20% of our energy, but if you have a chronic health condition, you have to have energy to heal. You have to have energy to sleep. Actually, people think they sleep to get more energy. Sleep is a very energy intensive, regenerative process. Um, so energy is really the key to everything. And in my book, Limitless Energy, I wanted to bring awareness to all the different metals and how they specifically uh, reduce energy production in the body and what to do about it. So you mentioned that your thyroid was affected. Is this very common with heavy metals? Yeah, absolutely. There's so many different heavy metals that um, can affect the thyroid, but most notably the uh, mercury is uh, the biggest problem because mercury will deposit in the thyroid and the other glands involved in the, you know, that delicate uh, thyroid hormone feedback loop that tells the body, hey, it's time to produce more thyroid hormones. Um, but mercury will also prevent production of the storage form of thyroid hormone, thyroglobulin. It interferes in the conversion of T4 to T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone that really revs up your metabolism, revs up and turns on your brain. You know, because if you have low thyroid function, you're, you're going to be depressed, you're going to have weight gain, you're going to have, um, you know, mood issues, and you're going to have a lot of symptoms that bring people to the doctor uh, and get them prescribed antidepressants and other things that they don't need. A lot of times people, they have to remove mercury um, because mercury is interfering in thyroid function. And I personally believe that mercury is one of the, the number one reasons why there's so much thyroid dysfunction and why thyroid medication is one of the number one prescribed medications in the U.S. Well, it, not only is it extremely common, the um, Hashimoto's is very common, which is autoimmune thyroid disease. Yes. And um, do you find that there's a strong relationship there with the autoimmune aspect of it? Absolutely, because if uh, you have mercury in your thyroid, where we know that mercury builds up in the thyroid, if you have an allergy to mercury or a sensitivity to mercury, your body can be trying to attack and remove mercury from the body, and then the thyroid is kind of uh, in the way and is fallout from that, and you have thyroid tissue that can be destroyed. And so, uh, you know, metals also interfere in immune system functioning, so they can induce autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's. Um, so mercury can definitely be a factor, and other metals a factor as well in contributing or outright causing Hashimoto's. 
So um, I want to talk about the immune system aspect. Uh, my specialty is chronic Lyme, um, which is part of my story. And, um, you know, most people, when they first come in, they just want it. They just think they're going to treat an infection and get better. And my treatment always encompasses heavy metals because I know if I don't do that, they'll never be able to stop treatment. So can you... Um, uh, just explain what the heavy metals are doing to our immune system. <clears throat> yeah, it's very, I love that you brought that up because definitely if anyone has Lyme, they, they have to remove heavy metals to have successful treatment protocols. And our the medical director of our detox program 100% agrees. Uh, and uh, the metals interfere in your immune system in a number of different ways, but the main culprits are mercury, arsenic, lead, and cadmium. Um, so kind of how these interrupt your immune system functioning is metals will inhibit your microphages and they're the, the important cells of the immune system that are formed in response to an infection or, a, or dead cells. And so they're just large cells that engulf and destroy target cells. And then neutrophils are also negatively affected by metals. They're kind of the first responders when the body is invaded by a bacteria or virus. And, um, you know, also uh, metals uh, inhibit and impair natural killer cells. You know, most of our white blood cells are natural killer cells because they're specialized to kill certain types of diseases, um, especially cells that have become infected with viruses or cells that have become cancerous. And so it's cadmium is really responsible in increasing the number of these natural killer immune cells. And these cells need to be low during pregnancy to allow for a baby to grow in the mother's body. So if these are high, they can cause recurrent miscarriages. Um, but th- those are just a number of examples of uh, how metals interfere in immune system functioning and the main culprits. But you know, people can also develop allergies to metals. So one person can have cadmium or mercury and the next person has the same amount, but that second person is more ill from it because they have an allergy to that metal. In the same way you, you can become mm-hmm. allergic to food or peanuts and things in that way, um, you know, you're going to have a lot you know, worse symptoms if you have an allergy to a, a metal that you have in your body. Which definitely makes sense. Um, You know, I've done a a lot of shows and there there is a trend in the conversation that a lot of our problems are coming from what we have done to our environment. And um, although I was a a passionate environmentalist beforehand, I am way more, way more passionate just because I know the damage that we're doing to each other, to ourselves. And, um, you know, when we're talking about these heavy metals, and then we're talking about something like Lyme disease, you know, although Lyme disease is a focus of mine, I know that it's actually not the root cause of everybody's illness because I see the heavy metals and I see the pollution and I see the toxicity and I know that that's really our focus and the Lyme is just such a small part of treatment and then we have to focus on getting the person to to deal with all these toxins and get them out of their body. Yeah, and you know, the... Toxins are the number one primary driver of disease today. I firmly believe that uh, Dr. Joe Pizzorno is very vocal in, uh, you know, pointing that out, that uh, these, I mean, like I mentioned before, these toxins, heavy metals, chemicals, glyphosate, and, you know, the thousands of new chemicals that are introduced without testing into our environment every single year are interfering in your body's functioning, everything, your digestion, your pancreatic functioning, blood sugar control, you know, stem cell production, what stem cells turn into, do they turn into fat cells or something else? You know, there's a lot of obesogenic chemicals in our environment that make you produce more and more and more fat cells. That's why two thirds of our country is obese. It's not just the food, though that's part of it. It's all the chemicals in our environment. Those toxins have to be stored somewhere. Um, and so other metabolic functions that can be interrupted are, you know, our brain functioning, our nervous system functioning, um, you name it. Uh, th- there is a, a heavy metal or chemical causing some sort of problem in its proper functioning. 
Well, and, you know, when you went through your journey, you also talked about hormones. And, um, you you know, there's a lot of metals and toxins that are are considered hormone disruptors, which sounds like that's what was happening with you. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So heavy metals can interfere in not only our sex hormones like estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, but our thyroid hormones and our stress hormones like cortisol and uh, adrenaline as well. And what happens is uh, metals will poison what are called hydroxylase enzymes. And these are metals or or enzymes that are important in producing hormones like DHEA and then converting that DHEA into testosterone. And um, then there's other, uh, there's so many different estrogenic substances in our environment called xenoestrogen. So a lot of the preservatives and perfumes and um, other ingredients in our personal care products, in our laundry detergents, in our household cleaners, um, uh, all of these things can be estrogenic that mimic estrogen in our environment and interfere and disrupt the action and production of hormones in our body. So there's a lot of different mechanisms under which our hormones are disrupted. So, you know, not surprising that so many people are having fertility issues, hormone imbalance, um, early menses and, and, uh, you know, issues of those natures. Well, um, part of my journey, I've told this story a few times on the show, but I was, um, I already had Lyme and then I moved my clinic into a building that was brand new and the entire building was off gassing. So all the Mm. chemicals that were coming off the furniture and the walls and the floors, um, it was all, um, high estrogen toxins and within a few uh, it was one week after about a month being there I gained 20 pounds in one Hmm. week and I didn't lose it took me a long time to lose the weight even after leaving that office probably partly because back then this is a very long time ago nobody talked about this as a problem and uh, so we didn't we didn't clue in that that was an issue for me and it took a long time to, to realize that but you know we know that these chemicals and and toxins and heavy metals aren't being regulated properly and we're all being exposed to them and then you know our our medical system is ignoring most of this and so people are just seem like they're just getting sicker and sicker and most of those people are getting lost in the system because it's not something that can be treated until it turns into an illness. Yeah, and they're just getting prescribed medications or quick fixes that induce more liver toxicity, less, you know, reduced ability to detox these other metals and chemicals in their body. So, you know, really, that's what I'm I'm here to do, just, you know, wake people up. You know, this is a little bit depressing, you know, <laughs> um, but but there's a lot you can do about it. There's a lot of control. There's a lot of choices you can make, better, better choices with your personal care products trying to eat organic food. There's a lot of things and changes you can do um, in your home and by what you put in your mouth and voting with your dollars, you know, purchasing products that are healthy for you rather than detrimental. So there's a lot of things in your control. Um, You can do infrared saunas and sweat out all the toxins you've ingested over the years. So it's, uh, you know, just a kind of a wake up call when people start learning about toxins and learning about what they're slathering on their skin every day. Um, I was kind of shocked because I'm pretty well read and read a lot about health. And it wasn't until my 30s, I started learning about this stuff. And I'm like, how, how was this not on my radar before? You know, I was just kind of surprised when I was reading this, this stuff. Um, but there's, uh, there's a lot that you can do. So it's, it's not as depressing as, as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to lift people's spirits after this break. Um, we're talking today with Wendy Myers and we're discussing her book, Limitless Energy. We'll be back shortly. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. Healthcare has been a major part of news stories today with one thing that has been consistent 
inconsistency. Both healthcare providers and patients have to work around and get used to a constantly changing set of rules and issues. Nurses have historically been left out of this decision making. Listen to Once a Nurse, Always a Nurse, exploring the world of nursing with host Leanne Meyer. Health professionals, we invite you to share your ideas and experiences while listening to experts in various areas of nursing. Listen Mondays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on Voice America Health and Wellness. Everything is energy. It's all connected. Your energy can be seen as the foundation for your life and impacts all areas of living. Do you realize that your thoughts have the power to affect how you show up? Tune in for Healthy Energy with Margo, featuring host Margo Nielsen. Margo and her guests will show you that connecting to your energy is vital to your health, relationships, money, and more. Listen live every Monday at 12 noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Now you don't have to stay linked to your desktop or laptop. Take Voice America on the go and listen anywhere. Get our mobile app for iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android at the Apple iTunes App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're talking with Wendy Myers, and we're discussing her book, Limitless Energy. So, Wendy, how do we know that we have a problem with heavy metal toxicity? Well, if you don't feel like you used to feel when you were younger, or if you are, say, in your 30s or 40s, and you're finding yourself really tired, uh, more often than not, brain fog, moody and maybe just don't feel like yourself you look in the mirror and you don't recognize the person in the mirror or like for me I was um, you know working out six to eight hours a week eating a really healthy relatively low carb diet uh, going to bed hungry every night and just doing all these things to lose weight and I thought god I would be an Olympic athlete if I did this (laughs) stuff 10 years ago (laughs) and so to me that was kind of a clue, like something is just not working correctly in my body. There's just, it's, and it's not my, it wasn't my age. I mean, I was, when I started having a lot of issues, I was 37. And at 37, you're not, it's not about getting older. You know, even, you know, tribal people that live, you know, very pristine lives, very ancestral lives, amazing diets, no disease, cancers, heart disease. These are people functioning very highly into their 60s and 70s um, without any kind of health issues or hormone issues and things of that nature. So it's not that you're getting older. There's other factors at play on your metabolism and on your bodily function. So uh, I warn people to heed your body's call. Listen to your body. If you kind of feel like your body isn't working or performing how it used to, you want to pay attention to that and be proactive and do something about it before you get a diagnosis. Um, and also be proactive at your, your medical doctor's office, whether they're conventional or functional. You know, don't just take the pill. Um, you know, you, you have to be a proactive patient because no one is going to care as much about your health as you do. They just don't have time. And so for me, when I went to the doctor and they wanted to do hormone replacement therapy, um, you know, I kind of thought, well, you know, I, I want to, I want an alternative. I want to address my health issues naturally. And that takes more work on the part of the patient that takes, you know, education on the part of the patient as well. So I, I typically will second guess um, things uh, recommended to me, if, especially if it's a medication. And I encourage people other also to do the same, you know, look for alternatives. There's so much amazing information um, on the internet. But uh, most importantly, 
uh, because heavy metals and chemicals are so ubiquitous in our environment, you want to be thinking that potentially um, these could be a factor in causing symptoms and health issues. Well, there's a a couple of things that you said that I love that you said. Uh, First is the age thing. Um, I I feel like that's an excuse when doctors or people can't figure it out. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, in in my 20s, I was told, you're young, you'll get over it. (laughs) And then when I hit 30 and I was just diagnosed with chronic Lyme and couldn't get out of bed at all, I was told, well, you're 30. (laughs) And I thought, 30? (laughs) My grandmother lived to be 104. What am I going to do for the next 70 years? you know yeah and uh, that wasn't good enough for me and and I also love the part where you said do something before you get diagnosed because I think a lot of people don't realize that their health is in their hands and you don't have to cross that line into a disease you can do something before it happens yeah because I mean the statistics are pretty good that at some point there's a diagnosis coming down the line and that like if you don't feel well if you are tired and you find yourself constantly reaching reaching for caffeine or sugar or carbs to get through your day, don't ignore that. Do something about it. Don't wait until you have, you know, you're 10 years down the line or starting to get a diagnosis because there's been so many different pathways of breakdown in your body to where you finally um, get a diagnosis. You know, prevention isn't really sexy. You know, people tend to, you know, don't want to fix something unless it's broken. But um, if, if you aren't feeling well, you, you're having trouble losing weight, you're moody, you're having anger, you're going into rages, you're just not feeling like yourself, start doing your homework and figuring out what's wrong. Well, and um, I, I want to point out something I learned when I did my show on Hashimoto's because we've talked about the autoimmune thyroid disease being linked to heavy metals and um, doctors will only test your TSH which is measuring your thyroid function but what we do actually know is that the autoimmune part will be happening for 10 years in the background before that part is even affected so this is where people often when they're finally diagnosed will say yes this has been going on for 10 years because they've been tired and they're their hair has been falling out or their skin has been dry or they're having these symptoms and their doctor doesn't know what to do. And and so this is where, as we you said, you know, take your health in your own hands, be your own advocate and, and look for those solutions before it turns into something. Yes, absolutely. You don't want to wait. Heed your body's call. Heed the warning signs and get proactive. It'll pay, pay off dividends. So when somebody's wanting to look into heavy metals, how can they go about getting tested? Well, you know, if someone is just kind of curious, even before we talk about testing, you know, I created a heavy metals quiz to help people determine their potential levels of metals in their body. They can go to heavymetalsquiz.com and take that and get some education and solutions after they take the quiz. Um, But as far as testing is concerned, when someone's ready to take that next step and to test, I really like hair mineral analysis. I think that uh, that's a great tool. It's not a perfect test, but it's a test that people can do very easily. Um, They can do it at home and they can get the results online over the internet. And it gives us clues not only to someone's heavy metals, but also to their mineral levels because minerals are really key in having correct mineral levels to help push metals out of the body. So minerals are a very, very important part of detoxification and getting the body working better so that it can remove metals and chemicals better. But uh, because it's not a perfect test, because some metals come out in the hair, some metals come out best in the urine, and some metals come out best in the stool, all three tests are ideal to be able to figure out the, you know, for the most part, the total body burden of metals in the body. But what I find is many times, especially if someone's very ill, a first initial test is really not terribly revealing. It's not, you know, it's not always super eye opening because if people are chronically fatigued or they have, they're not detoxing well, they got dealt a bad hand and detox genetics, they may not have any metals coming out, but it's a false negative. It doesn't mean they don't have metals. It means they're just not coming out. So when someone um, has that phenomenon, when they start doing 
detox protocols or taking uh, supplements that facilitate detox or uh, binders or just in facilitating detox in the body, then subsequent tests will have more metals coming out. So, um, you know, if we're talking about the genetic part, and this um, I find is a really b- big component when we're dealing with Lyme disease. Um, you know, I always tell people, the people who get the sickest the way I did are the ones that don't have the great genetics. And, um, you know, I see this in clinic because I have people that aren't sick. I look at their genetics. I'm like, you have one issue, <laughs> you know. And um, can you just talk a little bit about what that means for, for people if they do have these issues? Yes, well, it's one of those things is, you know, you're not defined by your genetics, um, but, you know, I think it's good to be aware of your genetics and be aware of perhaps supplements that don't work for you. Um, Be aware of your limitations so you can work around them because there's a workaround. Um, And you also, if you have detoxification issues, you're going to have to be really aware of opening your detox pathways prior to starting detox, like doing a lymph drainage massage, doing skin brushing, doing uh, coffee enemas, um, doing things of that nature that really help to facilitate detoxification. Um, And also taking binders, things that are, you know, uh, kind of supplements that absorb toxins really nicely that don't put a lot of detox uh, work on your body. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but if you know if you've tried detoxes, it hasn't worked. If you are feel like you have multiple health diagnoses, you're probably going to have to work with a, a practitioner that's knowledgeable about detoxification to make progress, because you know you need you need someone kind of holding your hand, helping you sidestep the many pitfalls that people can experience with detox um, if they're not well. Well, and and in this day and age, I think people go on the internet and read too much and sometimes get themselves scared that they've got every problem that's out there. And it's it's helpful to to see somebody so they can direct you in what you need for your body. Exactly, exactly. And we're all so, so different. We all have different supplements we react to or not. You know, we all have uh, different things our bodies can tolerate or not. So um, there's definitely a lot of different people out there talking about detoxification. They have their, you know, take this and don't do that. And, you know, they all have their different, you know, recommendations and protocols, but in their courses and supplements, but it's not a one size fits all um, you know, kind of thing. You just have to find what works for you. Uh, but it really helps to work with a practitioner that has that kind of background and knowledge about uh, what to do to course correct if you're taking something or doing a protocol and it's not working. So when somebody starts detoxing metals, is there a, a certain process? Like, do they need to be cautious? Do they need to be aware of anything? Um, what should people know? Well, if you're doing any type of a detox supplement or a program or a protocol, infrared saunas, things like that, you always want to be taking a binder. A binder is a substance that will absorb metals and chemicals and and kind of take some of the relief off of the liver and doing that. It'll clean the bile and, and things of that nature. So that's really important. I have a citra cleanse. A binder that I created. It's a modified citrus pectin. That's a really nice gentle binder. There's lots of binders out there, uh, but some of like activated charcoal, I don't recommend on a daily basis. It's too strong and absorbs too many minerals, but there's lots of great binders out there that people should definitely take and can increase the use of if they have detox symptoms and Herxheimer reactions um, when it comes to detox. So, um, when people start dealing with their heavy metals, do they experience a worsening of symptoms? Not always. They certainly can. Um, Some people uh, feel better when they start detoxing. Um, Other people uh, will feel worse. Um, But that's, again, where it comes 
uh, comes into play at being important in working with a practitioner. But typically, if someone's feeling worse, they need to increase binders, they need to increase water, they need to do coffee enemas, they need to open up the detox pathways. Um, Maybe they're taking a supplement that doesn't work for them. Um, There's a lot of different reasons why someone may feel worse when they start a detox. It's not always bad. It's not always a sign that um, something is wrong or not doing it right. You know, when you start mobilizing these toxins from their tissue storage sites, when they're coming out of your fat and your bones and your brain and getting into your bloodstream, you're probably not going to feel amazing. You know, um, it also takes energy for the body to process this garbage and have it exit the body. So uh, detox can be kind of like a roller coaster where you feel great some days and not so amazing other days. Um, but that doesn't mean it's harming you or you're doing something wrong, your practitioner is screwing up, nothing like that. Um, it, but again, it can take an experienced practitioner to say, this is uh, not normal, that shouldn't be happening, or this is normal, don't worry about it, increase binders and water. Um, so a really a lay person is going to have trouble distinguishing what's good and what's bad or when to stop supplements or when to stop certain protocols or how to course correct. So again, it's, you know, it can be important to work with a practitioner if you've tried detoxes before and they just don't seem to work for you. Well, and, and there's a couple of things that are important there. You said opening detox pathways, which I think everybody needs to do. Just back to that conversation about all the toxins in our environment that we're dealing with. I think most people have some roadblocks there of, of some degree. Um, and then you used uh, the word Herxheimer, which um, is just a detox reaction. So that's exactly. a worsening of symptoms. Yeah. yeah. And, and and I think it, it's pretty common with metals um, or just with any sort of detox detox that we feel worse before we feel better and it's not necessarily bad but it should be as you said controlled and monitored because what if it's the wrong thing that you're experiencing so somebody that does know that that's the right thing yeah because it could be be a a symptom like a a supplement reaction to a folate or you know a sensitivity to a supplement it might not always be a detox reaction so again really helpful to work with a practitioner I I definitely agree. We're going to take a quick break. We're talking today with Wendy Myers, and she's the author of Limitless Energy. We'll be back shortly. Opinions, options, answers. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. Are you tired of the healthcare system only treating your symptoms and never addressing the root cause? Discover how integrative medicine can resolve health issues through dietary and lifestyle changes and the use of natural supplements. Increase your energy, memory, mood, immune system, sexuality, and more. Join Dr. Sunil Pai and Maureen Sutton to help you take back your health with natural evidence-based solutions. Tune in every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Voice America Health & Wellness Channel. Addiction can affect our relationships, our families, our home, and work lives. But most importantly, ourselves. The recovery process can do wonders in the lives of people suffering from active addiction and also for those that love them. It's not just 12-step programs, but so much more. It's learning how to live life on life's terms. If you can relate to these issues or love someone who does, start with yourself. Start by tuning in to Miracles in Recovery with host Ray Lynch, Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Hope is in your corner. Have you become a member yet? Sign up now to become a member of Voice America. It's always free and easy. Plus, you get to take advantage of some great member benefits. Get unlimited access to millions of hours of on-demand content across all of our channels. Keep track of your favorite episodes, shows, and hosts in your own customizable library. Find out what shows you might be interested in based on your favorites. Plus, you get insider access with our newsletter. Membership gives you more. Sign up at voiceamerica.com and click register at the top right. Opinions, options, answers. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness.
You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Riss. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're talking today with Wendy Myers. We're discussing her book, Limitless Energy, How to Detox Toxic Metals to End Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. So, Wendy, when somebody comes to see you and you test them and you find some heavy metals, let's say arsenic and mercury, or I guess you could correct me on what's the most common that you see, um, what would you do first for them? Well, um, I would, you know... uh, essentially recommend supplements that are specific to removing based in the research uh, what's going to remove their heavy metals that they have in particular so for everyone that's different so uh, when we're working with clients you know using my Myers detox protocol it's you know kind of a protocol I've designed over working with clients the last 10 years <clears throat> we'll design a specific supplement protocol to help people bind to metals and chelate them, give them natural chelators that bind onto metals and help the body to remove them. And uh, so essentially, say if somebody has uh, mercury, really important to give them, you know, a fat-soluble lipoic acid. Um, That's much, much different than the typical water-soluble alpha-lipoic acid, Um, The fat-soluble one is 20 times stronger and gets into the brain more effectively into that fat tissue. Um, So really taking the right supplements, making distinctions about supplements, what works better than other things, giving people the right dosages is really, really important as well. Um, I also really like cilantro and different types of silica. Uh, Different types of silica remove different metals. Um, Like my activated silica removes metals that cause fatigue and interfere in energy production, like arsenic and aluminum and uh, cesium and thallium, which is a byproduct of car exhaust and smog. Um, And there's other types of silica that will bind on to lead and mercury and cadmium. So it just depends on how those are chemically altered. And then, of course, there's glutathione, which is, you know, got to give the body antioxidants so that they can help to escort metals out of the body, give liver support so the liver can break down the toxins uh, a little bit easier and then take them out of the body. And and so and also minerals are really key. Magnesium, selenium and zinc are typically the key minerals that people need. To, that are they're deficient in, but also need to facilitate detoxification as well. So, um, so you get somebody on the right um, support, and what just with the supplement part, what should they experience with that? Well, typically, when people start adding minerals to their, you know, their supplement protocol, uh, they start feeling a lot better um, because. Most people are magnesium deficient, and magnesium is so important for so many different processes in the body, including detox. So I find once we get people on minerals, they start sleeping better. They feel more relaxed. It calms the nervous system, especially the the trace minerals that are in one of the products that we give. Um, Trace minerals or even like fulvic acid, which is minerals, really helps to calm calm the nervous system down. So people feel less stressed, more relaxed, they sleep better, they're in a better mood just from that alone. And <clears throat> selenium, really important for thyroid hormone production and in detoxification as well. So really just feeding the body what it needs to work better and detox better are key. And, um, and then, you know, specific supplements to detox the specific heavy metals that people have is important. And you mentioned earlier a sauna. How does that help? Yeah, I love infrared sauna. Infrared sauna is really, really key 
in assisting the body to detox because you sweat out all these metals and chemicals while you're in an infrared sauna and it's very very pleasurable to do and it's not wasted time you know you can read or you can meditate or you can talk on the phone or you know you can do a number of things while you're spending that time in the sauna a lot of people feel like they don't have time but you can make time uh, for your health um, and do other things in the sauna but you know it's really key for you know helping immune system function and there, there's a lot there's a whole host of benefits to infrared saunas and if you do a near infrared bulb sauna where it's these red light bulbs in a sauna as opposed to the typical wooden sauna far infrared sauna that most people kind of associate or visualize when they think of infrared saunas the the bulb saunas that are just light bulbs uh, that you can get at really home depot (laughs) um, these are the types of saunas that i really like because the light the near infrared light helps to charge up your mitochondria and help to make energy as well because your mitochondria work in a few different ways to make energy and one is near infrared light charging up the biophotons and the mitochondria assisting in energy production so that's a great additional benefit you get as well if you use a near infrared sauna Well, you know, that explains why a lot of people that uh, do saunas just feel so great and it kind of seems like they can get addicted to it. Um, You know, (laughs) yeah, 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 I like mine too. Um, But sometimes I have to get people to to back up a little bit because I'm like, okay, hold on. I know you feel good, but we don't want to detox too fast. Just make sure you're okay. Um, But, uh, you know, saunas are, are a great tool for that, especially if you can have it at home and then you're not buying supplements all the time and you're keeping your you know you're going to be exposed every day so it's nice to know that there's a tool to help us detox um, what we're exposed to all the time without having to always take a bunch of supplements yeah for sure and you know it's one of those things where say even if you do a detox program and you're working with a practitioner you know you can't sustain that forever you know, you probably want to check in occasionally with your metals tests and see where you're at. But uh, I really firmly believe that people doing infrared saunas on a regular basis for life, um, because you you have to, you're exposed on a daily basis to toxins. You have to be doing something on a regular, ongoing, long term basis to you know remove what's coming in at such a, fa- such a fast rate. You know, I firmly believe that. People doing infrared saunas on a regular basis are the ones that are going to live longer, healthy, disease-free, medication-free lives. And this, the research reflects this. There was a huge uh, Finnish study that was done over 25 years that showed that men that did five sauna sessions a week had a 40% reduction in mortality of all causes, including heart disease. That is massively statistically significant. And that's just with a regular sauna. I mean, uh, you get many, many more benefits in an infrared sauna because you have much, much more productive sweat that has more metals and toxins in them because of the way the infrared saunas work um, and, and, you know, act on your body. So it's uh, really even in the research, uh, it shows that there's so many benefits. There's hundreds and hundreds of studies out there that show this. That, which is uh, amazing because, you know, it, not only can you just get them, you, you know, we have the typically we think of them as being a room in our house, but now there's so many other options. You can get sauna blankets and the ones where you just sit in them. So they're more portable so that, you know, they don't cost, you know, five, six thousand dollars or more and and uh, more accessible to people as well, which is amazing because we all need them. Yeah, I really, that's why I like the light bulb saunas, the near infrared saunas, because they still have a lot of far infrared. I mean, the bulbs actually emit mostly far infrared, but they're a lot more cost effective. You can set them up easy. They're easy to just plug in. They use a lot less uh, energy and they're they're portable. And like I said, they're a lot less expensive. Um, I have a lot of infrared saunas on MyersDetox.com that I recommend. So you can go on MyersDetox.com, type in infrared sauna, and you'll come up with podcasts or articles or recommended saunas in my store because I've, I've looked at all of them. So these are the ones that I recommend. 
Um, that's great. So how long does a typical heavy metal detox last for? Well, it just depends. Um, you know, the, the sicker someone is, it's probably going to take longer um, than someone who's relatively healthy, whose body is working really well to detox. Um, but usually you're looking at a couple of years is uh, the most reasonable estimate, but it can be longer if you have multiple health issues and there's kind of foundational work that has to be done before someone can really start on a detox. Well, and this seems like a a good reason to start, you know, kids learning how to do things like saunas and, and just protecting themselves so that, you know, the next generation coming up doesn't end up as toxic as we are and hitting those walls like you and I did with, with all these, you know, all this stuff going on that and hopefully we change our environment as well. That's a, yeah. would be a bonus too. <laughs> yeah, and you, ha- you have to think of, I try to encourage people to not think of detox as something you do once a year, like a 10-day detox in a box or doing some juice fasting or cleansing or whatnot. Detox is a lifestyle. Detox is something that you need to add to your daily health regimen, just like you're eating healthy, just like you're uh, exercising and going for walks. You have to think about what am I doing today to remove toxins, metals, and chemicals from my body, whether that's a coffee enema, a liver flush, an infrared sauna session, some binders, some minerals, some detox supplements. You need to be thinking about something on a daily basis and that will pay off huge dividends if you are thinking in that way. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, so what can somebody do to get started with this? If somebody's listening, they're going, I've never thought about heavy metals, what should they do? Well, I would start first taking my quiz at heavymetalsquiz.com. I think that's a great place to start to try to find out what your metal levels may be and some simple solutions. We give some a lot of videos and education about what the next steps are. So that's where I'd begin. And then when people go through this process, let's say, you know, a year or two in, because you said it takes about two years, what results should they expect to see if they're doing the right things? Well, really, some people have really dramatic results. Like for me, I was having a lot of sleep issues. So when I first started my detox and started taking minerals and um, started my protocol based on a hair mineral analysis, I started sleeping better within 30 days. I was really happy about that. And over time, I got I experienced more and more and more energy. I was having a lot of anger issues, which was just not like my personality. As I started detoxing my liver and doing liver flushes and coffee enemas, that dissipated. Um, Because, you know, the liver is really the seat of anger. When your liver is really overloaded, you know, a lot of people have anger as a result of that. Um, You know, people feel more happiness and joy. A lot of metals interfere in your neurotransmitter production and function like serotonin and dopamine. You know, your hormone levels improve, so your libido comes back. Mine was just non-existent. Um, And it's because I just wasn't making any hormones and not enough testosterone. Um, So people get a a lot of different benefits. They can have pain reduction. They can have better digestive functioning. Cadmium interferes in hydrochloric acid production and digestive enzyme production. Um, Just uh, people have resolution of a lot of different symptoms. But it's, you know, it, it takes time. You know, the body... Um, is really kind of the bottleneck where people can have compromised liver function, kidney function, uh, colon function, or skin function, and these are all of your detox organs. This is how the body, um, you know, excretes metals and chemicals from the body. So it can take time to kind of, you know, open up all these detox pathways, time for the body to start, you know, mobilizing all these toxins from your tissues and then having them exit the body. So it's just a process that happens over time. And then over time you have, you know, you see improved resolution and improved functioning and, you know, your symptoms falling away one by one. 
which is the key. And I think that the important part is hopefully, you know, preventing illnesses from happening. You know, in this conversation, we can see how even if you just start doing a sauna, you're going to prevent a lot of illnesses from happening. And if you embrace the entire heavy metal protocol, you're going to just help yourself feel better. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to add it to your already healthy lifestyle. I can't stress that enough. So if somebody wants more information about your book or um, has a question for you, how can they find the information? Yes, you can find my book Limitless Energy on Amazon on, you know, amazon.com, type in Limitless Energy, and you can find me and I've got hundreds of podcasts, hundreds of articles on myersdetox.com, tons and tons of free resources for people to dive into. Um, but like I said, you know, go on heavymetalsquiz.com if you want to take my quiz and find out your potential level of metals. Well, perfect, Wendy. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me. And I want to thank um, everybody for listening. We were talking today with Wendy Myers, and her book was called Limitless Energy, How to Detox Toxic Metals to End Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. If you want more information about my story and what I went through on my journey back to health, you can find that on my website at dr-risk.com. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Pinterest, or your favorite social media platform. And um, just Thank you so much for listening and be sure to make today a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Please join Dr. Rebecca Risk again next Monday at noon Eastern Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. We'll talk more next week.